Joshua uh, is led by the Lord to uh, to go and take possession of the lands. So uh, you may have those, and if you don't, share with the person next to you. And Okay, we give a uh, couple of minutes for them to get their coffee and then we'll get started. Hey, we're going to do something um, I don't normally do. We're going to try to do two chapters tonight because uh, the way the way this is, it's um, it's talking about all these conquests and it tends to repeat. But we'll uh, we'll see where we get. So we're going to start. We kind of started with chapter eleven uh, mm -hmm. the last time we met, but I'm going to go through those first five verses and then we'll pick it up in verse six, and um, and we'll see how we do on that. And I'm not promising anything. <laughs> Is this the study Bible? Yeah, it is. It's, um, it's the Word for Today Bible. It's a study Bible in that it's got, uh, it's got notes from Pastor Chuck that he had used. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. study Bible? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I've got one of those at home. Mm -hmm. So the ESV, mm -hmm. the English Standard Version. Mm -hmm. it's, it's real similar to the NASB and it's real similar to mm -hmm. some of the others, but yeah. it's more in our vernacular. Yeah. Not, not quite like the New Living Translation. That's probably the most in our vernacular, but some things in the, it's Living Translation is really good to read in the morning like this too. But there, there, there are parts where it's questionable. Well, that's because more that's more of a paraphrase. This is really an accurate translation. This is the New Living Translation, not a paraphrase. Yeah, it's uh -huh. the translation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it's, a, it's more of a thought for thought. Yeah, exactly. Rather than an actual word by word. Well, yeah, instead of word by word. Mm -hmm. That's how they categorize. The 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 NASB is um, probably one of the best on a word for word basis. Yeah, that's what people refer to as a nearly inspired young teacher. Which one? The NIV. Oh, yeah. Inspired person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know where you got that, too. That's pretty good. I've never heard that, Mike. Oh, that really? Yeah, that's kind of the way people I feel for it. it. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Of course, and, uh, it's jokingly. <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't jokingly on the trail for treats because I did meet somebody that said, no, well, we're King James only. Really? Yeah, the yeah. King James only are pretty staunch the about that. They're the ones that came that. up with the nearly inspired. Right, yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. Trail and treats? Yep. For Halloween. Oh, the film trip, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's another version, right? Yeah. I've just followed the way of many Calvary Chapel pastors with the New King James. So <laughs> Me too. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's the one I like. That's That's so uh, and I'm there are times when I look at it and I think I'm going to look at another version, but yeah, you know, most yeah, of the time I think it reads pretty easily. Pretty easily but, uh, no, okay, no, in uh, no, chapter no, 11 of Joshua, mm -hmm. now in from chapter 10 we see that um, the southern kingdoms in the, in, in the land of Canaan, they put a confederacy together after they saw Jericho was defeated, Ai was defeated, and when Gibeon came and made a peace treaty, and remember the peace treaty was really a, a strange peace treaty because they tricked mm -hmm. Israel, and Israel said, okay, well, you're gonna, chop, you're gonna carry the water and chop mm -hmm. the wood for us from here on out, and you know what they did. And we mm -hmm. even see uh, the uh, Gibeonites were of a nation that we call the Hivites, and we even see in one of David's mighty men, I can't, can't remember his name, he was a Hivite. 
and uh, and that's because his an his aunt said what's that? Is it Hittite or Hittite? Oh, Hittite. Hittite. I'm Hittite. sorry. Hittite. Hittite. Yes, a Hittite. There's so many ites. And <laughs> stuff. Right. He he was a Hittite, and I can't remember who he was, but it was one of David's mighty men. Uriah. 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 Uriah the Hittite. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, but when you trace him back, that means he came from Gibeon, the area of Gibeon. Mm. And so we see that when they saw Israel had uh, defeated Jericho with no problem, and then they eventually got around to defeating Ai when they were obedient to the Lord. Mm. Um, and when Gibeon went and tricked them, when Israel finally realized they were tricked, they still held up their end of the bargain. Mm -hmm. But we, we see that the, the scripture tells us that the Gibeonites, they said, we've seen your God in action mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and your God is a mighty God. Mm -hmm. And in their hearts, they, they, they said, it's time for us to join up, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. They joined up and so, you know, even if, if you were to go back today, there's probably, if, if you could track your ancestry that far back, there's probably those of Gibeon still residing and are part of Israel. They became part of Israel. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, it's interesting. So when the southern tribes, uh, the southern nations of Canaan uh, saw this happen, and especially when Gibeon, because Gibeon was a strong city, it said, a very strong city. They said, we've got to band together, and they formed a confederacy to fight Israel. And we see that in, um, in chapter 10, that Israel defeats all those, those uh, I would call them nation states. Uh, they, were, they had their own king, and uh, we, we look at it and we're, they're just small geographical areas. But when they, defeat, they defeated them, and um, Israel now has all the southern portion of the land that God was giving them mm -hmm. on, and I'm going to preface this because of tonight, on the west side of the Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, in verse, uh, in chapter 11, verses 1 through 5, which we kind of went over last, last time, says, it came to pass when Jabin, the king of Hazar, heard these things, that he sent to Jobab, or Jobab if you're from Texas, <laughs> king of uh, Madon to the king of Shimron to the king of, I can't even pronounce that name, Ashaf uh, to the kings who were from the north in the mountains and the plains of Chinneroth in the lowland and in the heights of Dor on the west to the Canaanites in the east and the west, the Amorite, the Hittite, the per Perizzite, the Jebusite in the mountains and the Hivites below Hermon uh, in the land of Mizpah. Now, you know, before we go on, in those first three verses, if you were to look at your map, you're going to see all those mm -hmm. in the northern part. It's on the bottom of uh, that two part and it says the conquest of the northern yes. um, nations. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And you see up to the, up to the far northeast there, you will see Mount Hermon. And um, so you see, th these are the these are the nation states that uh, are going to uh, come against Israel now, mm -hmm. uh, because when they saw when they saw what was happening, and that uh, Israel was rolling over all of them, uh, they said, if we don't if we don't do something now, there's going to be problems. It says in verse four, so they went out, they and all their armies with them as many people as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude with very many horses and chariots. And when these kings had met together, they came and they camped together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. You know, it's very interesting. Yeah. 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 This is probably the largest group that Israel has been confronted with. And uh, when it says that they were as the sand on the seashore, they were, they were large in force. <coughs> And the other thing, they were large in technology. And you say, how so? Well, 
Not all armies had horses and chariots, mm -hmm. yeah. but the more advanced armies had horses and chariots. Um, that's probably not Israel. If they had any horses and chariots, it was from their conquests. But, um, but we see that they're facing a group that is big and that has more horsepower, if you will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes it sound like Israel doesn't have a chance. It, it, it does, doesn't it? It makes it sound like, wow, they are, they're outgunned, they're outmanned. Um, and so uh, it, makes, it, makes these, it makes this whole um, history that we're looking at um, just greater to look at because we, uh, we already know what the result's going to be. And we know that God is working. And he did that to this in the southern nations. And it wasn't that southern nation, nations weren't, um, weren't equipped or anything. It's just that this northern group was more so. And it says, and when all the kings had met, they camped together at the waters of Merom <coughs> to fight against Israel. And in verse 6 says, But the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. Very interesting. Obviously, there may have been some fear because the Lord says, do not fear. Mm -hmm. Do you guys ever find in your life when you're facing a trial, does there ever fear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And have you ever had that small, still voice say, don't fear because I'm with you? It's kind of interesting that the Lord said uh, to essentially destroy the horses or lame them, really, uh, and to burn the chariots. There were probably a number of people that you know, we can use them in war, you know. And that's true, that's true. And that, uh, that's, a, that's a very good observation. And, you know, in our worldly ways, we, we walk in this world and we're often tempted to use the, the tools mm -hmm. of the world. Mm -hmm. But God often tells us don't do that. And then that's exactly what's going on here. Mm -hmm. He says, I want you to, I want you to get rid of them. I just hamstring. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Gwen and I like to watch um, some of these English films that are on PBS and all that. Uh, and there's there's one called Poldark, and and it's, he's always riding these big, you know, big steeds. And uh, it's not like our horses here. Our horses are are lean and really muscular and all that, but theirs are like. Huge and draft horses. horses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and it's uh, so I think of that. You, can you imagine you a horse and you're hamstringing a horse? Oh my! Yeah, I don't know how to use them. Yeah, yeah, you'd lame them. Yeah, yeah. you lame. Them. Nobody's going to use them. They're going to yeah. they're going to die basically gonna die. right there. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to die, and the chariots are burned. <laughs> and it's a good observation because mm. our tendency, excuse me, would be, hey. Let's just take the decals off the side of the chariots and put Israel on the side, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's let's give it a new paint job and and put our colors on it and use those because now we can really be an invincible force. But just remember that God says, "I'm going to deliver them to you in a 24-hour period." That's a miraculous thing. Mm -hmm. If if it was a force the size that they're talking about, that it says as many as there are grains of sand on the seashore. I mean, that's a figure of speech. We know that, but it means there were a lot of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the miracle is, is that God was delivering them in their hands and it says mm -hmm. slain, mm -hmm. slain before Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he say, they're gonna be slain and now you get rid of all their implements of war too. So, mm -hmm. And there's wisdom in that. You, they may not be able to use it, but nobody else will be able to either. Mm -hmm. So, but it all, once again, we've got to remember that uh, we go through trials and um, we, our first inclination, and, and I don't think I'm, I'm 
too different than other people. My, my first inclination would be, how do I solve this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we, we also, those of us sitting at this table, we end up saying, Lord, how are you going to solve this? And that's, that's what this is about. Don't be afraid, because I'm going to solve this for you. And by the way, follow my instructions. I love that. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? I, I, I've worked for people my, my, my whole working career. It's always great when you have somebody who tells you exactly how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They say, this is what I want. And when you have a boss that um, articulates clearly, like God does, he doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't mince words, uh, it's always easier to follow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but people do have a hard time following what God tells them sometimes. But if we would, we would uh, be victorious. In verse 7, it goes on, it says, So Joshua and all the people of war with him came against them suddenly by the waters of Merom, and they attacked them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who defeated them and chased them to greater Sidon, to the brook of Mizrafoth, and to the valley of Mizpah eastward. They attacked them until they left none of them remaining. So Joshua did to them as the Lord had told him, he hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots with fire. It's pretty amazing mm -hmm. that, um, you know, in some of these cities we, we still see around today, Sodom is still there, or Sidon, mm -hmm. however you may pronounce that. Mm -hmm. That's still there. Uh, that's, in, um, that's in Syria. Mm -hmm. or Well, actually, no, that's in Lebanon, isn't it? That's Saddam, today, yeah, right. that's in Lebanon yeah. today. But hmm. it's Mount, Mount Hermon is still around. Mount Hermon is still there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I imagine if we were to go, how many of you have been to Israel? Have any of you? Uh, no. You have? Okay. No. Well, you may be reading your Bible and all of a sudden you say, hey, I've seen a sign that says that. Uh, no. No. If you could read Hebrew, I guess. No. No. <laughs> but, it's not modernized uh, now, but it's not. I like uh, primitive back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, it's interesting because we we look at this and we think, man, these are really just hard <laughs> names to pronounce. But you know, they're real places, and uh, and you you think, well, why do we need this? Well, I want to say, put yourself in the children of Israel's shoes when this book was published. Right, mm -hmm. it was written in contemporary times for them, and it was telling them of the great things that God was doing for them, and mm -hmm. that had to give them great uh, courage mm -hmm. to be able to step out on some of the tasks that the Lord has asked them to do. Mm -hmm. But look here, it's I love that <laughs> the Lord delivered them just the way He said He would. Mm -hmm. Israel stepped out, followed their instructions right down to hamstringing the horses. Mm -hmm and burning their chariots with fire. Mm -hmm. You know, as we've read through a lot of this, um, not necessarily in Joshua, but as we've been going through, as we went through many different parts of the Old Testament, we see a lot of times where Israel does not follow the Lord's mm -hmm. instructions. And mm -hmm. I would have to say, and I think the statistics are fairly good on this, that every time that they didn't follow the Lord, they were defeated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And every time they followed the Lord's instructions, they were 100% victorious. Right. Mm -hmm. I, and I think that that's, um, that's something that we can take away from this is that, okay, I gotta share something with you too. Um, <coughs> sometimes you feel discouraged, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you feel discouraged, you're trying to do what the Lord has called you to do and you feel discouraged for one reason or another and that happens. I've had those feelings, even recently. Um, my trip back to Vietnam is um, six weeks away, and I have really I don't have enough to buy plane tickets. Um, and so I, I was uh, I was John Bentley with the I don't you guys haven't met John, but uh, you guys most of you here have met John. Uh, he's with um, a missions group called Harmony Outreach, and. 
up until um, last, last, last April, they still were operating um, um, China. orphanages in China, and then China uh, kicked them all out. Mm -hmm. But we're, that's who I've gone and I've taught the underground church with um, uh, twice, and then last year went with John as we went out to kind of scope out North Vietnam uh, for a ministry that a young man was doing in the far northwest and so we we were making plans to go back and teach these tribal pastors that are in the remote most remote parts of Vietnam and people are coming to the Lord just by the numbers and our my trip in January is to is to go train pastors uh, most of them, you know, they're teaching out of the Bible, and the Bible is translated into Vietnamese, mm -hmm. but they don't have any formal training, and um, I'm going up to teach them basic doctrines of the Bible, but it was like, Lord, I'm going to overuse this, but you got to show up. Yeah. you got to show Amen. up. Uh -uh. you got to show up. Uh -huh. I know you've called me to this, mm -hmm. because when we left last year, when we left, I knew I would be back uh, in 2019. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've been telling all of you for months, mm -hmm. I may be going two to three times this year. But uh, so I was talking with John Bentley and, and I, cause I called him the other day. I said, look, dude, you gotta pray because mm -hmm. we, we need prayer support because um, funds just aren't coming in. And otherwise I'm gonna be letting you down. And he says, no, man, you just keep stepping out on faith. He said, this is the way it is in our business. And I said, yeah, I know, I know. Well, I talked with him this afternoon. I was putting up some lights in the front yard and finished my talking with him, praying with him. And uh, Glenda comes out and she says, you checked the mail? And I said, I don't think they've come yet. And she went out there and goes, oh yeah, there is. There is something, there are letters here. How many of you got, got and read my very first newsletter for Calvary Chapel Vietnam mm -hmm. Missions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I sent that out, what, two weeks ago maybe? Well, in the mail was somebody I haven't seen in 50 years, somebody I graduated high school with. And I had sent this out to um, the high school group that I've really only attended my 10th reunion, wasn't able to hit our uh, 50th this last year. <laughs> and uh, and there was a fellow that I remember because he I had classes with him and he had told, he had responded to me last year or the year before on one of my trips to Vietnam that he was with a, he was with a big missions group in the United States. And he said, I'd like to help you mm -hmm. sometime. Well, there was a letter from, his name is Victor. There's a letter from Victor in there, and inside there was five hundred dollars. Oh, mm -hmm. not, not even five hundred bucks. You got off. Not, John yeah. John back. <laughs> Praise God. So yeah. How much are we praying for now? <laughs> What's the balance that we're? Well, making? I'm thinking it's going to cost. It's going to be about twenty five hundred dollars to do what I would like to do, and what I'd like mm -hmm. to do is meet John in mm -hmm. Ho Chi Minh City, mm -hmm. and then we'll go north to Hanoi, and then we'll go to the far north to a city called Sapa, mm -hmm. and that's where I will be teaching about 10, uh, 10 tribal pastors, like our American Indians. This is the indigenous people mm -hmm. to that area. And that's south of the Chinese border? It's my hotel room in Lao Cai last year, mm -hmm. looked out across mm -hmm. a river, and China was right across that river. Wow. We could see the r Chinese writing on the building. Yeah, I mean, we're, that's how far north it is. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's very remote, and it's funny. The f you're, if you're in Saigon or if you're in Hanoi, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can go to underground churches and all that, and you'll n never really be detected. Mm -hmm. But when you're out in the country, mm -hmm. it's a little more dicey. The great thing about where we are going this year is in Sapa. Sapa is a tourist place for Australians. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we, we can just hang out, and I can teach during the day in the hotel room mm -hmm. to these tribal pastors. Myself and another pastor will be teaching them. And then at night we'll go out and we blend right in and nobody will know the difference. Mm -hmm. So, but 
here I was I was I was feeling a little down and I know sooner I'm down and and of course John is always that way he get tired of hearing him step out on faith brother step out on faith bro mm -hmm. and I said John I always step out on faith but this is scary <laughs> 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 and he said if you're not scared it ain't gonna happen and, he, and I said that's I said yeah good. that's good that's why we talk <laughs> but uh, so when you listen for the Lord um, and Lord was just saying don't be discouraged mm -hmm. and he was using John to say don't be discouraged mm -hmm. And then John told me the areas he got discouraged in, so I'd pray for him. So it was really uh, quite a uh, great thing. Mm -hmm. But um, so anyway, it's like you see right here, even in Joshua's time, when they followed what the Lord said to do, it always came out the way the Lord said it was going to come out. Mm -hmm. But when they weren't obedient to follow the, what the Lord says, it didn't always come out right. And it was, it, Gwenda and I always had this, this thing. We said we wanted to be in God's perfect will, mm -hmm. not his permissive will. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we want to do, we want to do it our way. And God may permit that, but mm -hmm. it's never as good as this perfect will. Amen. And that's what, that's what uh, this points out to us. God's mm -hmm. perfect will. He told them what to do. They did it. And how awesome. Within 24 hours. Right? Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. Well, you can do it your way. And when they do it their way and it didn't work, I'd always say, well, how's your way working for you? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's it. that's the way it is with the Lord. That is. That's Sometimes good Sometimes our ways just aren't working. That's true. Yeah. We evaluate. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that comes good out of that is that we learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But that sometimes lessons are hard. Mm -hmm. um, in verse 10 it says, Joshua turned back at that time and took Hazor and struck it with the struck its king with the sword, for Hazor was formerly the head of all those kingdoms. So he strikes out at Hazor because Hazor put this confederacy of, uh, of nations together to fight against them. I did want to bring one thing up. It was interesting here. Um, see where it says in verse 7 it says Joshua and all the people of war with him came against them suddenly by the water suddenly God gave them an attack plan mm -hmm. and it was a surprise attack mm -hmm. here these nations were gathering yeah. but yet God had shown Joshua okay he moved in his heart that you're going to move quickly <laughs> and you're going to hit them and they're going to be surprised and it was a surprise attack so it says they, uh, that they, they attack suddenly by the waters of Merom. It's like, boom, they're there. So I just, uh, I just could, had to remember that that was an important thing, that uh, God gave them strategy, and they yeah. followed that. And you know what else? Yeah. He had the perfect intelligence, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, they knew because God told them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had the perfect strategy and intelligence. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I bet you it drove the, the I bet you they're wondering, how did this happen? I and bet you they all are. the surrounding areas were probably thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. How in the world did that happen? Yeah. Like in 67 when they... They're still going that, huh? Yeah, they're still doing <laughs> it today. Mm -hmm. And they're all scratching their head like... How does Israel how win does these things? Win uh -huh. yeah. oh they're outgunned, they're outmanned. Mm -hmm. But they're not out godded. <laughs> yes. In fact, uh, they've got God, and the other nations don't. That's the. That's it. With if God is for you, that really brings to light who can be against you. Right. Right. And it says, okay, so he took Hazor, and he struck this king with the sword. Hazor being the leader of those, it's always good to strike for the leader, and they did. Mm -hmm. And they struck all the people who were, were in it with the edge of the sword. <coughs> Hazor was a town, and they struck the king of Hazor, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And with the ed <coughs> edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was nothing left. Mm -hmm. Then he burned Hazor with fire. I want to stop there. You know, 
when you look at how the Lord is addressing their enemies, he's addressing it in a total type of way. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it for us, we have an enemy. We have an enemy that's always been around and our enemy is not just Satan, that's, that's our enemy, but our enemy is sin. And it gives us an idea of that when we are destroying the enemy, we need to totally, utterly destroy the enemy and then burn it down with the fire of the Holy Spirit of God. We need to, when we're fighting the enemy of sin in our own lives, we need to utterly destroy it. We can't, if we just take a part of it out, guess what's going to happen? The it's going to regroup and come back at you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here we see that the Lord told him, he said, it says there was nothing left breathing, mm -hmm. and then he burned it with fire. You think, wasn't that overkill? Well, isn't that what we should do with sin mm -hmm. in our lives, is, is destroy it, utterly mm -hmm. destroy it. Um, <clears throat> It says, so all the cities of those kings and all their kings, Joshua took and struck with the edge of the sword. He utterly destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. Mm -hmm. But as for the cities that stood on their mounds, Israel burned none of them except Hazor, which Joshua burned. And all the spoils of these cities and the livestock the children of Israel took as booty for themselves, but they struck every man with the sword, edge of the sword until they had destroyed them and left none breathing. As the Lord had commanded Moses his servant, so Moses commanded Joshua, and so Joshua did. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. Um, it's interesting, <coughs> Moses was, you remember he was... Um, Moses didn't always follow what the Lord wanted. You say, well, wait a minute, I thought he did. He did most of the time. Mm -hmm. But there was one time he didn't follow the instruction. Do you remember when the children of Israel were complaining about, there's no water out here, you brought us out here just for us to die, we would have loved to be back eating the onions and, and uh, leeks. And and <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, and, and uh, Moses got mad. Mo God said, speak to the rock, and the rock will give water. Mm -hmm. Well, Moses had struck the rock before, mm -hmm. and what did so Moses just went out, and in anger, he struck the rock. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord told him, I didn't tell you to do that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't mad at them. I was giving them water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Moses made it appear like he was mad at it. But uh, that's how gracious our God is. I, you know, I would have been like Moses. You complaining group, you know. Here, have your water. <laughs> but, um, but for the most part, Moses had great, great courage, great wisdom, and he imparted that to his right hand man. He imparted that to Joshua. And you know what? He probably imparted to Joshua, don't make the same mistakes I made. Mm -hmm. Because he never entered the promised land. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really, when we look at this, we think, well, you know, well, how did Moses get involved in this? Because Joshua was his understudy, mm -hmm. and Joshua mm -hmm. saw, and Joshua knew, knew exactly why he wasn't entering the land. Why did Joshua, you know, Joshua knew why he was taking over and why he crossed the Jordan and Moses didn't. But um, here, obviously, the Lord said it burned Hazor, that city of Hazor, but he didn't tell him to burn the others, but he told him to kill every all the men. And that's because there would not be the fight left. But they took as spoils everything else. So the Lord took care of Israel that way while they were fighting in battles uh, because they did obviously didn't have time to do uh, you know ranching farming and things like that so that's what invading armies did 
sounds kind of brutal in our day and age, but uh, this is what the Lord left for them. This is how he took care of them until they were able to sit into, settle into the land. But it says, as the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, so Moses commanded Joshua, and Joshua did. So obviously, Moses gave Joshua instruction before they parted. It's kind of interesting, don't you think? But, you know, I find that that's true even in our walk today. Um, Gwen and I have had to move a few times, <laughs> and it's always been great that uh, I've always had, I've had pastors that I've been able to call back on and, and talk to. Guys who have gone before me and made errors and have had victories and know the difference between victory and defeat. And uh, there's still, my pastor is in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. He's only a few years older than I am. But uh, Robert had great wisdom. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, at first I thought he was crazy. Uh, he, for good reason, right? He, uh, I've told you before, he was the guy that shortly after Glenda and I really knew him, he, he said, I don't know why, but God's got you two on a fast track. He says, you're going to be a pastor someday. And I was, I'm like, I, this guy's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I liked him, but I thought, he's, he's pretty, pretty insane, but uh, I really like him. <laughs> but, you know, now I call him because I found out he wasn't so insane. He obviously had the gift of... Uh, uh, prophecy mm -hmm. in that sense. He continued sense. to say that too. He never gave up. Yeah, he never gave up. And uh, I was, I was, I was just happy that God would use me. I could be one of His worship leaders. I was pretty stoked about that. But then mm -hmm. uh, Robert also said, "Start a Bible study." Mm -hmm. And I, I was crazy like him, and I did. And mm -hmm. it was uh, from that point on, it was like, okay, well now I had to keep teaching the rest of my life, but. We, we kind of see that uh, as Moses was a uh, mentor to Joshua. And Moses made his mistakes, but Joshua, Joshua was a great leader. He was a great military man. And you know what Joshua, where, where, his, where really his, um, I don't want to say fame, but his best attribute was he was one of the 10 spies that went mm -hmm. into the land of Canaan 40 years before. Mm -hmm. And when they came out, he and Caleb said, let's go take them. We can take them. And the rest of the others were saying, oh, no, we can't. They're big. They're big. And they, you know, we can't do it. And God said, okay, you can wander around the wilderness for a few years, 40, mm -hmm. and <laughs> until all of you are dead, and then we'll go in. But guess what? Caleb and Joshua are still alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right. Joshua and Caleb had great faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just read here that Joshua was nine years old yeah. when Joshua he took over the old. leadership. Yeah. Of this. See, I mean, he wasn't a young sprout. <laughs> and he died at 110, so his last 20 years. He yeah, and when you look at Moses' life, he was 80 when he took right. over. So that's <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I say that when the Lord says he wants you to go plant a church. I said, Lord, I'm real old to be doing this. Mm -hmm. I was 58. <laughs> and he said, pipe down. He says, I sp <laughs> Moses didn't start till he was 80. You're ahead right. of the curve. Right. You know? mm -hmm. I know. Caleb's like, yeah. Yeah, he's been 80 something. Yeah, I But I, I love, I love seeing Joshua and Caleb and their their um, their faith. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be a man of faith like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not always a man of faith. I, I shrink from my faith at times and I get discouraged. And uh, I'm just thankful. I'm sure they did too. Mm -hmm. But uh, And as we can see where the, the Lord says, do not fear. So obviously there may have been some fear mm -hmm. there. Uh, but I always, uh, I always ask the Lord for forgiveness when I fear mm -hmm. about the things that I know that he's already got handled. Mm -hmm. So in uh, verse 16, it says, Thus Joshua took all the land, the mountain country, all the south, all the land of Goshen, and the lowland, and the, lo and the Jordan plain, the mountains of Israel, and its lowland. 
By the way, this land of Goshen, it's not the Goshen in Egypt. It's the Goshen that's somewhere in, in the mid-central part of Israel. Um, and I don't, uh, I have a feeling from the way it talks about it, that Goshen may have been just a real fertile plain like it was in, in Egypt. And, um, you know, yeah, it was a common name. But I know a lot of people look at that, the land of Goshen, isn't that where they were? <laughs> No, it's yeah. not. It's in is that that Goshen's in Israel. Yeah. It says from Mount Halak and the ascent to Seir, even as far as ba Baal Gad, Gad in the valley of Lebanon below Mount Hermon, he captured all their kings, he struck them down and killed them. Joshua <coughs> made war a long time with all those kings. Mm -hmm. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, except the Hivites, in mm -hmm. the inhabitants of Gibeon. I guess I was right. It was the Hivites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's <coughs> it's true. Uriah was a Hittite. <laughs> mm -hmm. And all the others they took in battle, mm -hmm. for it was of the Lord to harden their hearts that they should come against Israel in battle that he might utterly destroy them and that they might receive no mercy, but that he might destroy them as the Lord had commanded Moses. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think the interesting thing here is that it says that all, there wasn't a city that went to make peace with them like Gibeon, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but the Lord had already told them don't make peace with anybody. Right. Gibeon was the exception because they, they used sleight of hand. Mm -hmm. They were, they were crafty. Mm -hmm. But uh, interestingly enough, it says that it was actually the Lord's doing to harden their heart. Now mm -hmm. you think, well, that's not fair. Well, we remember Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. We see that um, nine times it says Pharaoh <coughs> hardened his own heart, mm -hmm. right? And on the tenth time, it says the Lord hardened his heart. And we look at that and we can see the reason is because the Lord knew that they, they were never going to, they were never going to um, not harden their hearts. So, okay, you want it, you got it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of that way. Um, I guess, I don't know if this is right, but I kind of think of it as, um, you know, how the Holy Spirit can convict you. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the Lord just withdrew his, his uh, mm -hmm. chance with them altogether. So... They were just left to their own yeah. uh, <coughs> misgivings. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it because the Lord knows the heart. And um, in, in that regard, the Lord knows who's going to accept him and who won't accept him mm -hmm. in, in, in our walk today. Right. Um, when you think about it, someone dies without the Lord, mm -hmm. yeah, there's not an accident. It's not like the Lord was just sitting there saying, like, hey, you didn't have a chance to... Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true, and that's the way these these um, nations were. They weren't going to give up. That's why I say when we look at Gibeon, Gibeon had a great perspective because they looked and they said, "Israel's God is different than our God." Israel's God is all powerful. Mm -hmm. Israel's God is the real deal, and uh, you don't, you almost have to commend them. I mean, they remember they're fighting for their lives. They uh, re remember back in the text it says they knew that God was going to destroy everything. Mm -hmm. And now we we re I remind you of the reason was because of the great nature of their sin. Mm -hmm. Their sin was the worship of idols. Their sin, um, I mean. When you worship false gods, you tend to take on the sins of everything else, too. And uh, like I said before, the sins of those <laughs> nations, they were, their worship was highly sexually charged in many ways. And um, in other words, they were... They, they, but the Gibeonites were ready to walk away from all that. They were. Mm -hmm. They were. And that's, that's to their credit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's why God allowed it. Mm -hmm. because they knew in their hearts that 
But with the road they were going down was going to end up in destruction. Mm -hmm. And they were willing to change. They were willing to mm -hmm. change. But God could see these other nations. They weren't willing to change. <coughs> Do you think that that could be like a picture of when the Lord said that he's going to grasp the Gentiles into the tree? Could be. I mean... It's like he did that back then, just with a little... See here? Yeah. He did it here. Could be. I mean, that's absolutely a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's very interesting that in the same way, um, there is a nation called the uh, uh, the Etruscans, just north of the Latins, you know, south of the Tiber, and so uh, they were kind of like the the thug neighbor of the Latins, and s but at the same time. They were the great people of Etrusca who had the sense that Etrusca was going down. It was really something. And so um, it happened that uh, the guy before Caligula, I forget his name, Tiberius, I okay. think he was. Yeah. Uh, he was the last emperor that could speak Etruscan. Uh-huh. And so I guess he just died after that. Huh. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. But they had the sense of it. You know. Yeah. Wow. Well, Gibeon, obviously, they, they saw the Lord working in Israel. And um, they, they said, you know, <laughs> we've, got to, we've got to find a way. And they, they devised, it was, a, it was a lie, it was a total lie. Mm -hmm. But um, if there was a good purpose for it, it was they were, they were trying to save their skin because they saw that the God of Israel was the one true God. Mm -hmm. So they saw the testimony of Israel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. they did. It's kind of a, it is amazing, isn't it? Verse 21, it says, And at that time Joshua came and cut off the Anakim from the mountains. Remember the mm -hmm. Anakim? Remember when the the, giants. the spies went in? Those these are the giants. Wow. Yeah. And they said, "Oh no, those guys are big, yeah. right?" Yeah. <laughs> and uh, did how many of you saw Facing the Giants, the mm -hmm. the Christian movie about the yeah, football? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember when he was uh, talking and he was explaining? Oh, they saw giant. Oh yeah, those giants were big and all the that. Coach. The coach, yeah. 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 <laughs> the, I remembered that line and I thought that's these guys are big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so these are the these are the big giants. Um, and it says the Anakim from the mountain, from Hebron, from Debir, from Anab, from the mountains of Judah, and from the mountains of Israel, Joshua utterly destroyed them with their city. None of the Anakim were left in the land of the, ch uh, of the children of Israel. They remained only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod. Now, does anybody know where these places are? Philistia. Philistia. Yeah. Yeah. Those are all Philistine cities. On the coast. Yeah. And those were always a problem for Israel. And by the way, still are. they still are. <laughs> Actually, David was the turning point because he kind of... Well, he went and, with them. And he learned what was going on there because they had iron and Israel didn't. So he learned how to smelt iron and he brought the technology back to Israel. But he actually, he went in to defeat Philistines as well. They were He was with them at one time and... He was kind of like John Kerry. He was with him until he was against him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> um, but even today, look what's happened in the last month. Gaza, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't it from Gaza that uh, Hamas threw in something like a hundred uh, rockets in one day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then Israel has gone into kind of take care of business mm -hmm. uh, and so we sp it's still the same area it, it's it's funny so anyway uh, if you remember 
in, in Gaza, Gath, and Ashdod, that that's where the Anakim remained only in those coastal cities mm -hmm. of the Philistines. How do we know? We know because Goliath was from that area. Right. Mm -hmm. He was yeah. a giant. Mm -hmm. A giant of a man. Mm -hmm. um, Nine feet nine. Yeah, I, don't, I can't even imagine. He, he would be too much for the NBA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord had said to Moses, and Joshua gave as an inheritance to Israel according to their divisions by their tribes. Mm -hmm. Then the land rested from war. Wow. There was, there was actually rest in Joshua's time. Yeah. And they were in the land. Can you imagine what that would have felt like for the children of Israel? <coughs> now, we know that none of the ones that were there the first time they were to go into the land were alive, mm -hmm. but the children had grown up and they had known their fathers and their grandfathers and grandmothers and all, and they had heard the <coughs> story. Mm -hmm. And so I am I'm thankful that even those that died because of their sins as a result of their sin and not trusting God, they obviously conveyed hard truths to their children and their grandchildren because they were with Joshua. We don't yeah. see anything about them complaining about Joshua. Mm -hmm. Joshua learned from Moses. The children of Israel learned from the mistakes of their fathers. And as they go into the land, they're following God. And because of that, they're victorious. Mm -hmm. Now, one, one thing that I did uh, understand is that um, even though they, they, they overran these nations, not every small little town and city uh, had been conquered. What, what was going to happen is that as the land will be divided up, the, we're halfway through Joshua, Joshua's 24 chapters. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the book is how the division of the land went <coughs> and the taking of that land. So each one of the tribes of Israel will have to go in and clean, mm -hmm. you know, do the mop up. Mm -hmm. But Joshua and the children of Israel have done the heavy lifting as they conquered the kings. And in chapter 12, and we're gonna, you think you'll never make it through this, you watch. <laughs> uh, because this is quite repetitious. Look what it says. It says, these are the kings of the land whom the children of Israel defeated and whose land they possessed on the other side of the Jordan toward the rising of the sun from the river Arnon to Mount Hermon and all the eastern Jordan plains. Now, remember, remember there were three tribes, the tribe of Gad, the tribe of Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh said, hey, we want to stay over here, it's really nice. By the way, they, they had kind of the same attitude. They saw the fertile plains and all that, kind of like Lot. Yeah. When he separated from Abraham, he looked over here and he looked down and he said, well, it's really nice down there. And he went to live there. And it wasn't a, such a great place for him to live. But, um, but anyway, uh, so after they defeated, they, they, they possessed the land. and even on the other side of the Jordan, on the east side. But remember, and I think it was back in um, chapter 32 of Numbers. Now, see, and everybody thinks, oh, gosh, it's hard to read Numbers. I can hardly, it's so boring. You've got to hurry up and get through this. But there's a lot of information in Numbers. Mm -hmm. we, we learn the story of those tribes wanting that land mm -hmm. at that time. And... And all the stipulation was, okay, but when we go into the land, you gotta go in and fight with us. And they did. And so they end up having land on the east side of the Jordan. And um, <clears throat> in verse two, it says, one king was Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Hezbon and ruled half of Gilead from Aror, which is on the banks of the river Arnon. Now, I don't know that all those are on these maps, but they might be. So you may want to just go over this in your leisure time and study it because it's kind of interesting. Um, it says on the bank of the river Arnon, from the middle of that river, 
even as far as the river Jabbok, which border, which is the border of the Ammonites, and the eastern Jordan plain from the Sea of Chinneroth. We know the Sea of Chinneroth as the Sea of Galilee, or as it is described in some places, the, the Sea of Tiberias. Um, Chinneroth is actually, if you look up there, there's there's a city and it's called, it's spelled differently than in your Bible. It's um, actually, that it may be Kinneroth in, in some translations, but, but there's a city on the northwest corner of the Sea of Galilee. And so when they say the Sea of Chinneroth, they're talking about what we know as the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, in the eastern Jordan plain from the Sea of Chinneroth as far as the Sea of Arabah, and that's the Salt Sea, so that's the Dead Sea. Uh, the road to Beth Jeshemoth and southward below the slopes of Pisgah. Man, I should let Joe read this. He reads it so much better than I do. <laughs> the other king was Og, the king of Basha, and his territory, who was of the tenant, remnant of the giant who dwelt at Ashtaroth and Edwin, and reigned over Mount Hermon, uh, over Salka, over Bashan, <laughs> as far as the border of the Jezreelites and the Mechathites, and over the half tribe, half of Gilead to the border of Sihon, king of Hezbon. Boy, there's a lot of names here, isn't there? So he's describing all these lands. Now, remember, what does it say? These are the kings of the land that the children of Israel had conquered, right? So he's going over this in great detail. And you think, so what? But put yourself in in the place of the Jews of those days. Even the, maybe it's the, the near history for some of them. It's history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We learn American history. We learn about the Revolutionary War. We know a lot of things about the Revolutionary War. Well, this is Jewish history. We would be if people didn't write it down. Yeah, and that, and it, so if it's written down, it's, it's important. And it, it gives us context. It even gives us context as we read our Bible as we go forward. And um, verse 7, it says, And these are the kings of the country which Joshua, the children of Israel, conquered on this side of the Jordan, on the west, mm -hmm. from Baal God in the valley of Lebanon as far as Mount Halak and the ascent of Seir, which Joshua gave to the tribes of Israel as a possession according to their divisions in the mountain country, in the lowlands, in the Jordan plain, in the slopes, in the wilderness, and in the south, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the per Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. So we're getting a picture of all, first of what Moses conquered, mm -hmm. and then of what Joshua conquered on both sides of the Jordan. The side, the area of uh, on the east, and the area on the west, mm -hmm. and then it goes into in the from verses nine through twenty-four. It talks about the kings that are conquered by these folks. We'll see you guys. <laughs> the king of Jericho, one. The king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, one. The king of Jerusalem, one. The king of Hebron, one. The king of Jarmuth won, the king of Lashith won, the king of Eglon won, the king of Gezer, that's not old Gezer, but that's <laughs> Gezer. <laughs> the king of Debir won, the king of Gedar won, the king of Homoth won, the king of Arad won, the king of Libna won, the king of Adullam won. They conquered a lot of, I'll say. <laughs> the king of Makeda one, the king of Bethel, one, the king of Tapua, one, the king of Hefer, one, the king of Aphek, one, the king of Lasheron, one, the king of Madon, one, the king of Hazar, one, the king of Shimron, Meron, one, the king of Ashaph, one, 
the king of Tanakh won, the king of Megiddo won, the king of Kadesh won, the king of Jogneum in Carmel won, the king of Dor, and so on and so forth. <laughs> we, uh, 31. 31 kings. Yeah. There were a ton. And you might, you might look, and you, you, even if you were to look at a, a map of uh, Israel in Jesus' time, you see some of those same names there right. of the cities. And so it's, uh, this is important history. It's really important history. And particularly when you, when you think about um, that Israel has got something to look back on and say, look what God has done for us. Yeah. He freed us from the strongest country in the world, Egypt. And he brought us into a land that was filled with, uh, with enemy that needed to be conquered, and God did that. It wasn't Israel. It was God. Yeah. It was God. And so we see the history of it, and uh, it's really, um, really wonderful to say, you know, the Jews have a wonderful history. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes so far back. Okay. So this happened in Joshua's time. Mm -hmm. It was about 2,000 years before Christ. Mm -hmm. So whose property is that? It's not Palestinian. No. Israel. The Jews have been on it for 4,000 years. Um, they're still fighting over the same plot of land. A plot of land that's the size of Rhode Island. I know. <laughs> but isn't that amazing? See, to me, why, why would anybody be concerned with a country in the world that small, but yet all eyes are focused on Israel? You either hate them or you love them. And we love them because God chose them. And uh, that's just a... We'll end it there, and uh, so God did a miracle here tonight, too. Yeah, I was going to write it down in my calendar. But yeah. <laughs> 31 kings. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay, Bill, Bill has asked for prayer for his job. He just started a job a couple of weeks ago with um, Costco, right? Costco, yeah. And it was supposed to be a part-time job, mm -hmm. but they keep scheduling full-time. Oh, they like them. The yeah, right. The <laughs> but uh, the, so, uh, yeah. Bill and Cheryl just asked for.